This John Weir, 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 Weir. This guy is um, definitely uh, working at the Queen's College English Department, which is very disconcerting. John Vere is the author of two novels, The Irreversible Decline of Eddie Socket and What I Did Wrong. His writing has appeared in several anthologies, including Between Men, Original Fiction by Today's Best Gay Writers, and Vital Signs, Essential AIDS Fiction. Oh my goodness. So this is, this is what universities across the country, probably across the Western world, are funding. Uh, his nonfiction has appeared in Details, Spin, and Rolling Stone. Oh, wow. And so we have here, I think what this appears to be is some sort of, like, posh, bougie, like, I don't know, reading of his work or something. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll go over this. Why d and over at Subscribestar wanted me to go over this in a video, I'm not exactly sure. But, but, subscribers must be obeyed. So, here we go. I would like to introduce my friend and mentor. John it gets worse. Yep. <laughs> Sheesh. Thank you, Jason. Hey, Jason. This is old, I guess. Uh, old, uh, but a little new. And uh, what should I say? Nothing, really. It's called It Gets Worse. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not really an ironic title. Um. Then why promote it? <laughs> I mean, that's the that's you know that that might be the operative question throughout this entire thing. And uh, and it goes like this: <laughs> Jodie Foster came out at the Golden Globes by saying she wouldn't. <laughs> it was the opposite of a performative speech act that enacts what it says. Her statement performed what it didn't say, what it refused to say. It was like how you'd come out if you were Magritte. <laughs> there she is. For <laughs> See how fucking sheltered it is to just be one of these people, to be concerned with, you know, creating butt babies. Framed in the TV set or computer screen like an everyday object that is also a work of art. Enacting disclosure above... It's like a wine and cheese, like, you know, upscale dining kind of atmosphere. I'm a caption that. that reads, this is not a disclosure. <laughs> a surreal... What the... Uh Realist says, I'm gay, but it's in French, and it's a collage, and the, the words are scattered all over the page in the shape of a teapot. <laughs> if you had like, oh, we're so dysfunctional. <laughs> Just a little bit of background. You know, a lot of different, let's see, a lot of different people have screen capped this guy. So he's like... Oh boy, oh boy, which which one of these? It's like a lot of digging at white men and a lot of digging at the pro-life movement and a lot of digging at, you know, of course he's a masky. We can get into like a lot of that stuff. Weird, bizarre, bizarre, like LGBT pandering using, of course, using position as a uh, tenured professor to From do it. From the time you were a toddler, she said, maybe you too might value privacy above all else. And what I want to know is not did she come out or not, but... What's privacy? It's 1970, and I'm in New Jersey, rural northwestern New Jersey, not Cape May, not the Jersey Shore, not, not the part of Jersey that's an adjunct of Manhattan, not Camden, the suburbs of Philly. A keg tapped at both ends is what Ben Franklin called New Jersey. And keg tapped at both ends? Is he about to make some really cringy gay joke? Anticipating the turnpike. But, <laughs> but, but I'm 11 years old, and, and oh. I live in the part of, New, in the, part of the state that, that's tapped out. The, the Musconet Kong River Valley and the Jersey Highlands, uh, Lebanon Township in the northernmost point of Hunterdon County. These days, Hunterdon County is the fourth richest county in America after the three counties that surround this, the nation's capital. But in 1970, before they finished Highway 78, and it was suddenly a straight shot from Clinton to Canal Street, 53 miles and 49 minutes on the interstate. But in 1970, before Reaganomics and, and a fast commute before the yuppies arrived, it was still a depressed dairy farming community in recovery from spoiled milk and dead cows and abandoned grist mills along the banks of- It's like all projection. Dude is, comes from the yuppies and has disdain for the middle American farmers. You can sense it right there. The south branch of the Raritan River. 
Not that, a, not that there's anything wrong with chicken farmers, though there's nobody meaner than an angry chicken farmer or a disappointed chicken farmer. Okay, I'm a snob. I'm an urban snob, Manhattanish. Even at the age of 11, my father works in the city and my mother rides her retired racehorse bareback in the hills behind our house. And, and on weekends, they put on plays in an old music hall in Clinton with their gang of expatriate New Yorkers. But my brother and I go to grade school with poor white people who are all their own cousins. Who <laughs> 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 are, you know, they're working on chipping away at that. You know, by doing this sort of thing. Like, this is the kind of stuff that he does in his class. I'm teaching a sort of queer lit and politics course, and I was told my students, my first, their ho- Bleh! <laughs> and I told my students their first homework assignment was to go home and tell their parents they're queer! Was that wrong of me? Uh, yeah, dude. No educational value. You're fucking with their heads. You are, yeah, a little confusing for the straight ones, maybe. And he reveals, which was my intent. Well, and I mean for them to think about queer as, a me- as meaning things other than and or in addition just sexual activity and identification or gender identification presentation. I like it. Dude, these people need to be in jail, obviously. People right- rightfully pointing out on good old Reddit. People actually go $70,000 into debt for a degree like that. Clown world bullshit. Back when the clown world meme was still going strong. Oh, boy. We're so far beyond that. We're so far beyond being, like, clown-pilled. Like, if you can stay clown-pilled out there, wow, more power to you. Expect expect us productive, those with a positive tax burden, to start footing the bill for it. You've been done footing the bill for it, buddy. I mean, <laughs> you've been footing the bill for it. What do you mean? Meanwhile, I went in for 50K on so- comp sci degree and have paid... Dude, that is an awful sentence. Meanwhile, I went in for 50k on comp side degree and have paid 32k of it back in just over three years. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And you like, I'm not the only one to point out. Like, if you actually take out a loan for a, a useful, worthwhile degree, meanwhile, some assholes like queer lit in politics tell your parents you're queer, 19 year old. Why? What? Like to challenge heteronormativity, this dude gets paid probably like the big six figure bucks while people like us are like wallowing, <laughs> like, oh man, getting banned from everything. It's just, it's revolting. I'm a terrible snob, a little Blah. elitist at the age of 11. Maybe that explains what happens next. Yeah. Or maybe not. It's a bright- it explains your Yiddishness. Crisp fall day at Lebanon Township. Your Yiddishness explains your snobbishness. Elementary uh-huh. school on the Bunvale Road, and I'm running for president of the sixth grade. I'm, I'm wearing a seersucker suit. It got me elected president of the fourth grade, but that was two years ago, and now the pants are too short. <laughs> They're clam diggers, why don't I know that? I, I've also got a crew cut, and my hair stands up in front, but not in a fun way. <clears throat> it's 8 a.m. My, my classmates and I are standing outside the school building waiting for the bell to ring and, and the day to begin. We're gathered around the big double doors by the boys' gym. The, the building's long. And he's got like a chubs just in anticipation. Long and low and flat and red and white and laid out like a ladder where you climb over nine years from kindergarten up to eighth grade. Kindergarten down at the south end and eighth grade up at the north. And then, then you get sent to the high school 10 miles away, actually. Actually, I think the eighth grade rooms are in the middle. But anyway, there's a hierarchy, and sixth graders are almost the big kids. We're standing in a patch of ground covered with small, round, gray stones that make a satisfying crunching sound. The Oy vainus intensifies. <laughs> faces the road. But we're in back, and there's nothing behind us but a big empty field running off to pine trees in the distance. Way down there are a couple of swings and a slide, and we're, we're on the top of a, a flat, bare hill. Kids are wearing light fall jackets. The cool kids carry their lunches in paper sacks. Some of us still have our third grade lunch pails decorated with scenes from Saturday morning cartoon shows. Underdog or a, a Fireball XL5. The air- God, they had horrible cartoons back then. It smells like cow shit and red clay and light. They like Rocky and Bullwinkle. I mean, no offense to people out there that like that Hanna-Barbera era stuff, but holy crap, it sucked. <laughs> and pencil shavings Oof. and the bubblegum flavored toothpaste scent of my classmates. Somebody's got a transistor radio and Paul McCartney is singing, get back to where you once belonged. 
<laughs> I've written a, in the closet. a speech that I plan to deliver at Spare the all. rally. It's folded in my hand. I've been rehearsing it. I'm nervous and distracted, and I don't notice that a circle is forming around me until, until somebody calls my name. Sally, he says. Well, that's me. <laughs> the, the, the thing that's, is, that's the modern I'm version. A girl. Nobody's called me a fag yet, but I've been Sally for a while because I'm a smug little creep. <laughs> because my mother rides her horse sometimes in the fields behind the school. Yep. Because I'm, because I'm pretty. Yep. Because I, I play horsey with my girlfriends down at the kindergarten end during recess. <laughs> and it all culminated into this snobby wine and cheese, like, oh my God, inbred working class white people. Oh my God, let's replace them. Because when little kids want to say the worst thing about you, little boys and even sometimes little girls, the first thing they do is call you a girl. Unless you are a girl, in which case, why say it? Being, being a girl is insult enough. <laughs> Sally, he says, and I ignore it like Sally I'm, forth me I'm if not I'm big wrong. enough or strong enough to hit anybody, and, and anyway, like, like Jane Fonda, I'm anti-war. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, dude. I believe in nonviolent resistance. None of this is when funny. When an angry dog goes after you, my mother says, don't react. <laughs> so yeah, her mom, his mom, yeah, her mom. His mom taught him to be a beta male. Um, basically, just not to not stick up for himself, right? I mean, and now it's like, lo and behold, he's beta. So I don't. Anyway, I know the guy. He's Eric. He hits home runs. I, I let him cheat off my English tests. Then he says, "Sally Faye." Ooh, a twist. <laughs> a new word. Sally forth Sally me if Faye, I'm wrong. He says again, and he pushes me. I I'm waiting for it to turn into a joke. It doesn't. The next time he says it, somebody joins him. Then someone else, it's a chant. I'm thinking, whoops, there goes my election. <laughs> and that's when I noticed the circle closed. I mean, all politicians are pretty much gay anyway, so. around me. It happens really fast, and suddenly everyone in my sixth grade class is pushing me. Anyway, all the boys, and I, I bounce off different parts of the circle. It's bumper pool, and I'm the ball. Well, they call me no. Sunday, like we're drag queens <laughs> instead of 11-year-olds. Oh, look, that's telling. Like we're drag queens instead of 11-year-olds. Fast forward, what, what, like five, six years later? 11-year-olds drag queen story time, buddy? Hmm, hmm. Telling, telling your students to go tell your parents that you're gay, even if you're not, just to fuck with them? I mean, not just I mean, it's just clearly, this entire thing is clearly just designed to mess with regular people's heads to control them. Not just Sally Faye, they try new names. Maybe maybe the first time any of us have heard This is rich them. people. This is like ultra-rich, bougie-connected people that, again, they don't care. It's not about making money. It's about, well, they'll lose money just to stick it to the people that they want to stick it to, which is Q8. Or said them grace notes over the melody line. Sally Faye, Sally Faye, faggot. Somebody says, Sally Faye, and then homo, Sally Faye, Sally Faye, homo. Faye faggot, <clears throat> and queer. Queer. <laughs> okay, my name is Weir. Weir. What choice do they have? Queer, Weir. Uh, the kids who don't call me Sally have always called me Weirdo, and I don't mind it. It's just my name. John you know queer. what's my name? Weird. Well, Weird is an Anglo-Saxon word for destiny or fate, W-Y-R-D. And Faya is a Middle English for fairy or fay, F-A-Y. Or beta. Or fay, F-E-Y from the Anglo-Saxon fae, meaning um, fated to die soon. <laughs> a faggot is a bundle of sticks thrown on, on a pyre to burn witches. And faggoting is a de ah, good old days. decorator's term for something you do with lace. <laughs> Queer. Queer is Germanic from the root thwer meaning um, thwart. So, so I'm twisted, thwarted and thwarting, fairy-like but, but fateful, not just silly but lethal, not just deadly but fated to die, kindling for fire, powerful and burning, but also inconsequential, dainty as threads pulled tight around delicate lace. Is he gonna get into the fact that he was probably maimed or touched as a kid? I, I mean, I'm waiting for that part. Is, you know, is, is any part of this gonna be honest or forthright? And I'm the star. That's what's so confusing. <laughs> Trapped in their circle, surrounded and alone, I, I'm rejected and central. And here is the beginning of my lifelong inability to tell the difference between pain and attention. <laughs> Which is why you are what you are. It's like, why, why do, it's like we, as a society, give platforms to people like this, not only just this little ill-attended, little bougie, hipster, elitist 
poetry slam, but I mean, this dude's again, he's a tenured professor at Queens. He's an English professor. Um, why, why are there parades being thrown for people like this? I mean, look at the kind of stuff this dude has said. I mean, this is in reference to what any random lone wolf, what is this? Oh, oh, I see. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Sunday sermon. That's Jesus talking about Satan in the Gospels. And by the way, is John a little anti-Semitic? But James Earl Jones was reading this to me in my car this morning, and I wasn't thinking about Jesus. But of course, and alas, Trump, the best part about the lies he tells about other people's evil deeds are really confessions of his own. That was, what the fuck? That was just completely incoherent. I realize that comparing Trump to Satan is unfair to Satan. Uh, this dude is of Satan. I mean, he's like revealing, I don't know, you know what I mean? He's revealing that his dedication is to Moloch, I think, in in a lot of this. I, I don't under, I mean, it's a lot of projection. I I don't understand much of this to decipher except to say that it's projection and like a, a declaration of sorts of what sort of like evil intent he has <laughs> to, to destabilize, undermine that sort of thing. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go over other quotes. <laughs> From that day, <laughs> stop the laughter. <laughs> <laughs> From that day, I'm the faggot. Everybody knows or wants to know, what makes you such a fag, they ask me, on the playground, on the school bus, on the way from one classroom to another. The fact that, well, we already went through that, like his mom taught him to not fight back against bullies. He was super into, like, frilly stuff. There's probably no man around to be like, hey, no, we're not going to do that. You know what I mean? There was, there was no sort of, like, male role model or influence around that was positive and any sort of... And, like, and if there was, it was probably, like, denigrated or cast to the side or characterized as bad or whatever. Like, you know, listen to the posh laughter in the background. Think of that. Like, oh, oh the father thinks that he's involved meaningfully. <laughs> Go back in the garage. Or, like, it, I don't know. It's just, like, you could sense... Why are you a fag? What's it like to be a fag? And I'm, like... Well, you tell me, because you knew before I did. Privacy? I never had any privacy. Everyone was naming, from, naming me from the, from the time I was 11. It was everybody's business. Naming them. But mine, <laughs> except it was also a secret. No one could ever discuss it. No adult, anyway. Certainly, certainly they saw it. <laughs> I won't mention dodgeball. <laughs> in, Dude in got eighth grade music class. He likes getting beaned with balls, doesn't he? We're singing Home on the Range. Our music teacher, Mrs. Westman, is a giant German woman who looks like a Wagnerian soprano. And she hands out lyrics on mimeograph sheets. And then she puts, a, puts on a sing-along record on the phonograph. She runs her finger over the needle with a scratching, popping sound and drops the stylus into the groove. And she raises her hand to conduct at the refrain, Home, Home on the Range. The class turns to me and sings, Homo on the range. <laughs> turns to me and sings Homo on the range. And I'm like, Homo on the range. This <laughs> is Westman. Help oh. me. Adults were no help. They were, they were not just no help. They called me a faggot too. Dude, the adults were down with Homo on the range. They jammed that from morning to night. Everybody, everybody is what I'm saying. Everyone I knew and everywhere I went within 20 miles of my grade school and then my high school knew I was a faggot and called me a faggot. And if they didn't know I was a faggot, it was only a matter of time before somebody told them. And it was just amazing to watch them switch from, from liking you to their appalled discovery that you were scum. Un-American, a communist, probably. A, a yes. Harvard, a, yes. A 